Good afternoon, everybody. It is Saturday, October 10th, and it is a warm and humid fall day here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And today, I wanted to teach you how to overwinter a pepper plant and even make it so it will fruit for you and produce fruits all season long, all throughout the winter, regardless of your location. Right in front of me here, I have a four foot by 10 foot long garden bed. And I've had peppers and basil and marigolds and eggplant. And earlier in the year, I had tomatoes planted in here that were put in as seedlings all the way back in March. And right now the tomatoes are long gone, but my peppers are still hanging on. And I'm about a month away from frost and I am going to be converting this raised bed right here into a hinged hoop house. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to clear out this bed. And I have four cherry pepper plants in here that are still doing well, that it's just a shame to have to rip out these uh, great producing plants. Uh, so I looked them over and there's one, two, three, four of them. And this one right here, I think is by far the healthiest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig this out of the ground and I'm going to show you how to move it into a container, how to cut it back, fertilize it, and you will actually be able to take this inside your house over the winter. The thing about pepper plants is they are actually a perennial. A pepper plant will grow and produce into a massive bush for years and years and years with the proper amount of care. However, we in the United States typically think of them as annual vegetables, and that's because virtually the entire land mass of the continental United States sees hard frosts and freezes. If you were to live in an area of the tropics or the subtropics where you don't get frosts and freezes, you could plant a pepper in the ground and it will produce for you for many years. So that's why you're able to bring this in and overwinter it as a productive plant. In fact, a pepper plant will almost grow into a tree-like bush. Uh, at the base of this pepper plant, it's actually actually starting to turn into what appears to be actual wood. It almost looks like lignification. It's not really wood, but that's how strong the branching can become on a mature pepper plant. So the very first thing that we need to do is we need to dig the pepper plant out of the ground. And in order to do this, I'm going to take a trowel and I'm going to cut the pepper plant roots all around the tree, all around the plant just like this. And what I'm going to try to do is, I'm going to try to get my trowel nice and deep under there, and I'm going to try to lift the pepper plant up. And it takes a little bit of effort, but eventually you will be able to pick this right up. And you want to try to leave uh, much of the root mass intact right here. You don't want it to be too disturbed, but at the same time, it's okay to shake some of the excess garden soil off here. And I grow my pepper plants uh, as well as pretty much everything in my vegetable garden in pure compost. Here you can see just how lovely the roots are on this. So with that simple little lifting with the trowel, uh, you get this great root structure. So I'm going to set this to the side and then I'm going to take a bag of compost just from, uh, from Lowe's, some plain old Lowe's compost. And I'm going to fill the hole in the garden back in. Now let's take our pepper plant over to the container and pot it up. Now that we've pulled our pepper plant, I'm going to pot it in one of these number two or two gallon fabric grow bags. I love these things. They provide great aeration. And since I'll be doing this in the winter time, uh, the black will add a good amount of heat from the sun to help warm up the roots and help the plant grow. So uh, if you don't know where to get these, I have these linked on my Amazon storefront. They're awesome and they're very affordable. Now let's talk potting medium. You can use any kind of potting mix that you want, provided that it specifically says potting soil or potting mix. The number one ingredient has to either be peat moss or cocoa core for water retention. You can't use a garden soil. So here I'm using this, uh, this, uh, this compressed package of ProMix because Walmart had it on clearance. I also like Walmart's Expert Gardener brand. You can use that or whatever else you can get from the big box stores or a local place. Now, in the potting mix, we are also going to mix in an organic fertilizer. And here I have uh, the Walmart organic brand. 
Uh, this is a 356 because this again was on clearance. You can use anything that is close to a 555 as long as the numbers are low and they're close together, like a 555, a 444, a 543, uh, a 627. Just don't use something like a 2012 or something like that. Uh, just make sure that you're using everything with a close number and try to use the organic. Uh, we are also going to add in some worm castings. Uh, again, I got these on clearance. You don't have to use these if you don't want. One thing I do strongly suggest that you do use, though, uh, is an organic bone meal because this is a very dense form of uh, calcium and phosphorus. And calcium and phosphorus aids in root development. And that's important for this tree because it is going to need to recover from the shock of being dug out of the ground. It's going to have to regrow some of its roots and it's going to have to take to its new home in the container. So this is a great way to minimize transplant shock. So this is all pretty straightforward. We're going to stand up our container and we are going to fill it full of this dry uh, potting medium. And again, this is a dry medium, so it will have to be rehydrated. So keep that in mind. Um, it will compress on you when you rehydrate. So I'm simply going to fill this up about halfway. And when you're filling this up, make sure you break up any clumps. You want this to be nice and light and loamy. And now that that is filled up about halfway, I'm going to take, I'm going to take a handful of the organic fertilizer. And I'm going to take half a handful of the worm castings and half a handful of the bone meal. and I'm going to mix this throughout the container. And then once that has been mixed thoroughly, we are going to take our root mass and we are going to install it into the container. It's a little hard to see. But hopefully that gives you an idea. And then we are going to fill it up to, until it's about two inches from the top with the potting medium. Now, because the soil medium is so dry, the plant wants to fall over. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to moisten the medium. And I'm going to let this completely hydrate because that is going to help hold the plant in place. And it will probably take a few attempts for me to do this. As you can see, the potting medium has already moistened. So I'm going to have to do this a few times. And we are going to keep doing that until the soil medium is completely saturated. And now that the potting mix has been saturated, we need to compact it and press it down and move our hands all around the edges to make sure that there are no voids in the container. And I believe this is pressed down about as much as uh, that is safe. Uh, it feels like that there are no voids, but you also don't want to over compact it. Now I'm going to add more mix because I just compressed it down quite a bit. And we're going to keep adding mix and watering it in until we have about a two to three inch lip to the top of the container. And now that our plant is potted and watered in and secured, the next thing we are going to do is we're going to put one of these bamboo stakes inside the plant to give it extra support. So I'm going to gently press this through the root mass and the reason why I like these bamboo stakes is because they're so thin. They don't do a whole lot of root damage. So we are going to compress that down. And it's okay to do this now because the tree is already uh, going to have to um, undergo a lot of recovery. So it's best to do it now and get it out of the way. Then we are going to use this expandable garden tape to tie up the tree. And I love this, this expandable garden tape because when you wrap it around the trunk of the tree, it doesn't girdle the trunk as the trunk expands in diameter. Um, it will expand with the expanding trunk. So we are going to wrap that around the trunk and then we are going to wrap that around the stake. And then we're going to tie that in a double knot. And now that it's been staked, we are going to top dress the soil with more fertilizer, worm castings, and bone meal. So we are going to use another handful of our organic five, roughly 555 fertilizer. That handful is a little bit too small. So add a little more to that. And then we are going to give it yet another pinch of the worm castings. 
and we are going to give it a nice dusting of the bone meal. And then we are going to gently with our fingertips work that into the top inch of soil. And as you know, we left the mix inside the container two to three inches low, and that's because we are going to mulch the top one to two inches of the container. And this is an important step because it helps promote even water retention because most of the uh, water loss is from, uh, it's from sun contact from the soil and the evaporation effect. So this will prevent the evaporation effect. And it doesn't really matter what you use for mulch as long as it is a natural mulch. Uh, you can use hard, uh, shredded hardwood mulch, you can use pine bark uh, nuggets, uh, you can use straw, you can use grass clippings. What I am using here is a, a natural cypress mulch, and I chose that because uh, cypress is uh, decay resistant, and I would never use something like this in my in-ground garden beds because I actually want mulch to decay on top of my garden beds, but in the containers, I don't want the mulch to decay. I want it to be a rot-resistant mulch because its purpose is to just promote uh, even water retention. So uh, cypress and cedar and redwood mulch, as long as they're all natural, uh, is a great thing to use because they are decay resistant. Just do not use a dyed mulch. Do not use a colored mulch. Do not use uh, red, brown, or black mulch. They contain artificial dyes. Now the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to water in our pepper plant with a soluble fertilizer. And I have two soluble fertilizers here. I have Alaska Fish Fertilizer, which is an outstanding source of organic micronutrients. It's made out of whole fermented ground up fish. And then I have the Expert Gardener uh, Soluble Chemical Fertilizer 24816, which is the Walmart knockoff of miracle Grow all purpose. Now, when it comes to growing in containers, I strongly recommend that you use a soluble fertilizer. Uh, when you grow in ground, there is a diverse microbiome in a raised bed garden or an in-ground garden. And when you use all organic fertilizers, you actually need the, uh, the worms, the bacteria, the fungi, all in the soil to consume the organic fertilizer and excrete the nutrients back out. Granulated organic fertilizers and things like bone meal are not immediately bioavailable, but soluble fertilizers like the fish fertilizer and the chemical miracle Grow style fertilizers are immediately bioavailable. So I always want to supplement my container trees with some type of immediately available soluble fertilizer that does not have to be broken down by the microbiome. And while you can go 100% organic and buy completely organic soluble fertilizers, they tend to be very expensive. Um, uh, fish fertilizer is a good source of, source of nitrogen, but not of phosphorus and potassium. So I recommend supplementing your containers with an inorganic chemical fertilizer. And uh, if you are against that, remember the chemical fertilizers, they all break down the same. They're, they're not poisonous to the plant. They're just not organic. So you couldn't call this an organic, uh, an organically grown plant. However, um, when you grow in containers, that's not a natural environment. So keep that in mind. Trying to be completely organic in an unnatural environment sometimes doesn't work well. Uh, so I'm going to take some of this fish fertilizer into this one and a half gallon uh, watering can. I'm going to put a glug of that in there and then I'm going to take my chemical fertilizer and this fertilizer recommends a concentration of one tablespoon per gallon. Always read the box for that concentration. I'm going to give it exactly half that. So this is a one and a half gallon scooper. I'm going to give it half a scoop so that'll be a concentration of half a tablespoon per gallon because this tree has to recover from shock. So I want to give it diluted feed. And this is going to be important. The reason why I'm using 24816 is because it's 24% nitrogen. Nitrogen makes green leafy growth and I'm going to cut this plant back pretty significantly with pruning. I want it to send out all new leaves rapidly. So I'm going to fill up this watering can completely. And uh, this is way too much fertilizer for one plant, so I'm going to give this about a third of the watering can and split the rest between other plants.
Now the final thing that we need to do is we need to prune our pepper plant and we need to do this for two reasons. The first reason is the pepper plant has to recover from the transplant shock and trying to hold on to all of these leaves and all of these branches and all of these fruits, it's not going to work out very well for the pepper. So we want to cut it back some so the roots will be able to reestablish without focusing on having to maintain these fruits and these leaves. So that will help give it a fighting chance in recovering quickly. The second reason is this pepper plant has been in the ground since March. I planted the seed at, in January and started it in a tray. So this plant is basically 10 months old. It's pretty beaten up from little bits of disease and pests. So what we want to do is if we cut it back, we can not only give it a better form that is more uh, comfortable inside of a container instead of this sprawling bush, but we can also generate all new growth out of this tree. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we are going to pick off all of the fruit because these green cherry peppers are still really good eaten. The second thing that we're going to do is we are going to remove all of the dead wood. Any, any branching that does not look good and that is not uh, showing any signs of life. We're going to cut all of that out and all of that back because that uh, is useless to us. We're also going to remove some of these suckers from the base. We want a nice trunk and we will not get that with suckering growth from the base. We want to kind of make this into a scaffold form. And now it looks like everything here uh, is pretty healthy. Um, and what we want to do is uh, we want to prune this into a scaffold and we want to try to make it so all of the scaffolds are roughly the same height because uh, plants grow from something called apical dominance where the, uh, the growth hormone concentrates all the way at the top. That's why you see new branching at the top of the trees. You don't see branching at the bottom. Once those branches are formed, there won't be any more lower branching because the growth hormone concentrates at the top because plants always try to reach for the sun. So they, they grow top heavy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. This is actually a really nice branch on its own. It has very little disease. So I'm going to let this continue to grow. Uh, I'm going to try to cut this back at the same height and uh, it is pretty close to that right now. So let's take off the not so good looking branches from that. And then I'm going to cut this back. Uh, these are called nodes right here uh, where you see uh, where you see the bumps in the stem. Each bump is a node so at each node you're liable to see growth come out of it. So I'm going to cut this back uh, to right here because I want this little branch here to keep growing up and also maybe I'll get a new uh, bit of growth out of this node right here. And then this one right here, this one is just straight up too top heavy. So we are going to cut that back just like that. So what more than likely will happen is I will get branching out of this node right here because it is the highest node on the tree. And if you actually zoom in, you can actually see right here there is a green bump starting to form that green bump right there should turn into a new branch. And now that we have this nice scaffolding form formed here, I'm going to try and tie this off to the stake. And then I'm just going to remove some of these lightly diseased leaves, or uh, they may not be diseased, they may just be a little bit malnutrition. Uh, we're just going to uh, pull them off right there. And then we are simply going to let this go and we are going to keep an eye on it. Remember I gave it high nitrogen fertilizer, so there is a really good chance that we are going to start seeing green growth out of this pepper plant at, at all of the nodes uh, fairly shortly. And that right there is how you dig up and pot up a pepper plant for overwintering. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this behind the avocado tree on the south side of my house because the south side of the house is the warm side but I want it in shade while it recovers because it will go through a little period of transplant shock and keeping it out of direct sunlight will help increase uh, its chances of recovery. Now obviously if you're already getting frosts and freezes at night you're going to have to bring this inside and let it recover either inside your garage or a shed somewhere where it's not going to see frost or freeze. But if it's still nice and warm like it is where I am on the coast of North Carolina, I can leave it outside until it recovers. So here we are on Sunday, October 18th, and I wanted to give you a quick pepper update. 
And here you can see where I pruned, you can clearly see that there is green growth forming at that node, uh, and they're really forming everywhere where I, where I pruned. Uh, you will see green growth that's forming right there. And that is all a result of me pruning the branches a lot lower and the growth hormone concentrating lower in the main stem. So because we pruned this pepper plant, we will start seeing new shoots in all directions. Uh, we also have more flowering and more fruiting. So the pepper uh, is in a great recovery. It's doing well. Uh, it's, it's forming cherry peppers all over the place. And I really think that uh, in another couple of weeks, it will be fully bushed out. So everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you found it helpful, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about anything that I use in my garden, everything that I use is linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. Thank you all again so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Look at this vicious dog right here. Look at these sharp teeth. <laughs> Look at him. He's a killer. <laughs> He's the sweetest boy in the world. <laughs>